I've received some really great feedback on the transmitter tour videos I've been making lately, and you seem to enjoy the detours into other bits of geekery too, so a huge thank you. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of that sort of content, because I really enjoy making it. In a recent video, I glanced over this tower in Buxton in Derbyshire, and said that if you wanted to see a full tour, then let me know. Lots of you wanted to see a detailed tour of Buxton, so here it is. This is Buxton Relay, and while many radio sites are more than just a relay, Buxton is crammed with, well, relays. Its main purpose is a television relay for Winter Hill. It was one of no less than 26 local relay stations brought into service in 1973 to bring television to the masses. The IBA set a target date for its commissioning as December 7th 1973 and despite the terrible weather conditions Buxton sees during the winter months they managed to pull it off. It started with a 1 kilowatt UHF transmitter and served as a relay of Sutton Coldfield, serving the Midlands and the East. Now you may recall that I said that Buxton is a winter hill relay. Well the early 1980s saw the site switched from a Midlands relay to a North West relay. By 1982, Buxton was relaying BBC's 1 and 2 and ITV from Winter Hill. Channel 4 began here in May of 1985. FM radio was added during the end of the 1980s into the early 1990s, with BBC Radio 1 and 2 starting in late 1989 and BBC Radio 1 starting in early 1990. This all took place as part of a filler scheme designed to give better coverage to numerous areas across the UK. BBC Radio Derby started transmissions from here in March 2001 and High Peak Radio, now Greatest Hits Radio, started in April 2004. But what do all these antennas do? Which service comes from which antenna? What frequencies do they transmit and receive on? And at what power? Let's take a detailed tour, starting at the top. The cylindrical structure at the very top is a classic example of a UHF television relay. In the analogue days, there was a 1 kilowatt transmitter feeding the antenna, but today it's just 200 watts. The transmitter sends Freeview Television out on BBC A Channel 27, D3 and 4 Channel 24, and BBC B Channel 21, and you'll notice there's a lobe out to the south when we look at the radiation pattern from here. Why? Well, the town of Buxton lies within that lobe, so the signal from the antenna is concentrated in that direction. As we're working our way down in order from top to bottom, I'll show you shortly how Buxton gets its television feed from Winter Hill, as it's a relay after all, so needs to be fed what it relays. The next structure is nestled amongst the various pieces of cellular equipment on the mast. It's the DAB relay. BBC National Channel 12B is relayed from here at 1 kilowatt using this antenna, which has been here since June 2008. The DAB antenna is surrounded by cellular antennas. I can't be certain who these belong to, but the four major UK providers all have gear on Buxton Mast. That's EE, 3, Vodafone and O2. Just below this is a pair of circularly polarised antennas in phase. They're mounted together facing two directions to provide a lobe towards the town of Buxton and are made by a company called Cathrain. Using combiners, a piece of equipment that allows a single antenna system to radiate multiple stations, this setup sends BBC National FM Radio. That's BBC Radio 1 on 99.6, BBC Radio 2 on 90.0, BBC Radio 3 on 92.2, and BBC Radio 4 on 94.4, as well as BBC Radio Derby on 96.0. All of this is sent together at 100 watts combined. Unfortunately, to see how this is fed and where from, you'll have to wait until the end of the video. Remember how I told you earlier that the UHF transmitter needs a feed? Well, that's where these log periodics come in. The first thing I noticed here was that four seemed to have gone missing. This was an array of eight antennas, all pointing towards Winter Hill, but today there's only four. Either way, they receive the television signal coming from Winter Hill, just under 35 miles away, and feed it to the transmitter that's linked to the UHF cylinder at the top. Next is this pair of white stick antennas, one of many at Buxton that serve the police as part of their UHF Tetra airwave system, which I'll cover in much more detail in an upcoming video. 
These antennas provide coverage in the surrounding terrain, so that the police can communicate with each other in the shadows created by the hills. Just below is another cellular site, with panels feeding signals to the surrounding area. Further down is another white stick antenna used by the police, and then a few microwave links. Microwave links are used here to feed voice and data to smaller localised towers, and there's links for Derbyshire Constabulary, BT and MBNL on the tower too. Hiding behind a microwave link and another white stick is the former High Peak Radio transmit antenna, which now belongs to Greatest Hits Radio. I made a video recently covering the complex network surrounding Greatest Hits Radio in this area, which I'll link below and at the end. For the history of this antenna, you'll love that video, but today it serves the Buxton area on 106.4 FM at 250 watts. This is fed by line nowadays, but there was an RF link in place. You can see another set of microwave links and another police white stick. Moving further down, you can see the old feed antenna for what was High Peak Radio. This points towards Booksworth, and again, I'd recommend watching the video linked below, but I made this graphic to show how that system worked, and you can clearly see the link between Buxton and Booksworth. Today it's redundant, and you can see that it's missing an element. Near the start of this tour, I showed you the single phased array that radiates BBC 1, 2, 3 and 4, as well as BBC Radio Derby, at the same time. Well, that antenna needs to be fed by something, from somewhere, and this is the receive system that provides the feed for BBC's Radio 1 to 4, and this is the receive system for BBC Radio Derby. The BBC's Radio 1 to 4 antennas are log periodics, and appear to point towards Sutton Coldfield for the reception of the feed. They're either phased, which means they're harnessed together to form a phased array feeding one receiver, or they're running independently, feeding separate main and reserve feeders, but I can't confirm this. Moving further down to the lowest antennas on the mast, we come to a pair of Yagis. These are the receive antennas for BBC Radio Derby. They point towards Stanton Moor, and again I can't tell if they're phased or independent. If anybody watching knows, then let us know in the comments. At ground level, we have all of the transmitter and receiver buildings, as well as supporting power systems. And the final bit of equipment is this satellite dish towards the back of the compound. This receives the BBC DAB feed, which is relayed from the DAB antenna we looked at earlier. So, that's Buxton. If you'd like to know more about the High Peak Radio Network, which was really quite complex, then there's a link in the description below. And if you'd like to watch more transmitter tours, there's a playlist down there too.